Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In this video I am pondering a Venus mission. It's a little bit past the Venus transfer window and we'll have to wait 570 days apparently for the next one. I'm not too sure about that. Uh, I thought it was a lot sooner but maybe not. Uh, but yeah, we have this Venus probe though that we could just edit. We have a few possible missions. We can get science data from the surface of Venus or position a satellite in orbit of Venus. We probably can't do both of those at the same time. Uh, so I'm thinking about just rushing it. And even though we're past the window, maybe we can still swing the mission. Uh, but we'll have to see, first of all, which one is most lucrative. Well, the surface of Venus isn't worth anything. <laughs> um, uh, I think we should try and get one of these satellite ones. And it looks like this specific orbit of Venus is better. So, That'll probably entail minimal adjustment of our probe. Let's just take a look at it. I mean, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It was a spare anyway. So it's just a very simple sort of probe. It's got the sort of porcupine arrangement. It's even got uh, relay antennae, which is good because then we can help out our lander mission. Our lander mission, uh, eventually, this uh, surface of Venus science data, will need an antenna that can survive the atmosphere of Venus, which we do not have unlocked yet, so we will need to do that. But yeah, otherwise this looks like a good configuration for the intended mission. Um, yeah, Unless we wanted to air break, which I don't think so. So I'm actually going to cancel edits. And we are going to launch it. After that, the big contract is uh, crude lunar flyby. And that's got to take some doing. Alright, let's see if our one engine works. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition. And launch. Looks good. So, I tried to look at the rescue contracts to see if I could get them to not be in the atmosphere at one end. But I can't find the the rescue contracts at all. There is a contracts.config for stock, and I've already done some editing of that per what was done in RPU0. But there is no section for rescue contracts. So I don't know where the information for rescue contracts is hidden and how to adjust the orbits that the Kerbals appear in. So what I'm going to say right now is, uh, having tried out Principia for the first time, is well, you might not be able to do the rescue contracts if you're using Principia. Otherwise, I don't see any particular problem with using Principia with RP2000, but those Kerbals would die, basically, uh, because they would be deorbited very quickly and you would not be able to get to them. So keep that in mind. Okay, first stage separation and also fairing separation and ignition of the second stage. We waste no time. Same rocket configuration that we've been using a lot, so I'm not reintroducing it at this point. See, even without the tooling and all that business, you can just keep using the same rocket. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing stopping you from reusing the same rocket over and over and over again, incidentally. Okay, we're like just barely outside the atmosphere and making orbit here. I guess that's efficient. <laughs> well, the periapsis is a bit low, so let's watch out for that. But we're going up for now. Um, yeah, well, maybe it's good for transfer, but I don't know. Uh, getting into a particular orbit around Venus might be difficult with our Delta V here. Let's see. Let's have Mechjab plot uh, maneuver there. Uh, ASAP. Well, it's not that bad a transfer. So let's see. The orbit we want to get into is uh, that one. So are we be are we going the right way around? Yep, that's the right way around. And it's just a matter of maybe a little bit of a tweak to inclination. We could probably do that and make course adjustments, assuming we have comms. Oh, speaking of which, let's get the comms out. 
So let's say we do this. That will leave us with about 2,500 meters per second left. Capture. Okay, how much is that? That's 4,000! What? Oh no. This is a uh, bad. Uh, Mike Jeb is giving me something bad. It might just be like that though, because we're launching at this time instead of the proper window. We're a little bit past the proper window. But maybe MechJeb is neglecting something, hopefully. Problem is getting into this lower orbit. Uh, yeah, we can get into a high orbit, but we can't get into a low orbit. I think, let's see. Yeah, we can capture. The problem is, maybe we can get some drag from Venus's atmosphere. That's probably dangerous though. I guess if there's a time to test it, it's now when the probes are cheap, right? Okay, we're gonna try and lightly dip into Venus's atmosphere and try to aerobrake carefully? <laughs> um, I don't know. We'll, we'll actually capture first and then do that, I think. We could leave it as a supplementary relay probe, or we can test uh, atmospheric reduction to our orbit. Right now it costs 2,000 to capture. That's still quite a lot. That'll only leave us with about 500 afterwards to do any other further adjustments after Venus's atmosphere gets through with us. Which doesn't sound good uh, at the best of times. We are also losing Delta V because of boil off. Low orbits around things are just tough. Okay. Separation and go. Okay, getting ready for shutdown and shutdown. Okay, nope. Kill rotation, please. Okay, that's outside of the 145 kilometer atmosphere. That's a bear capture. One thousand six hundred like that. Then can we error break? That is the question. But let's do this maneuver first. But we should plan some other missions while this is going out there. Let's go to let me uh, add the alarm for this. And let's go to the space center. So, here in the tech tree, basically we need precision engineering to get this parabolic antenna, which would be able to survive in the atmosphere of Venus without breaking, and without, of course, uh, folding up. So far, all of ours either have too little range, or they would explode. So, I think we need to research this finally. Another thing we need to do is put a links on another rocket so that we can, well, maybe we should just build, uh, we should build a new rescue mission. Instead of putting a links on, we'll just use the same sort of setup and use the Mark 1 pod. That worked okay. And so that'll be our standard way of getting these Kerbals from low, low Earth orbit. I was going to say Kerbin orbit. Okay, so let's build one of those. No, it's the Milden Rescue. A Milden type rescue. Anyway, the rescue contracts don't pay enough for us to do anything more than this. <laughs> okay, well, it worked one time. It should work. So let's um, rename it to Lod Bin Rescue. I don't think there's anything I needed to change. Okay, so we're building that one. Okay, other than that, we will want to do the crude flyby mission of the moon and that does require a links because the mark one pod doesn't have enough supplies and you know we do want to do it instead oh and the mark one pod may or may not be able to survive coming back from the moon so we just want to do it properly so let's edit the links s2 are we supposed to trust that the parachutes are repacked properly i guess right hmm <laughs> hmm, it's a tough call. 
It's calculating the number of days this is going to take. 606 days. Did the old heat shield have a uh, blader loss on it? It didn't, actually. So, the question is whether this is good enough for a crude flyby of the moon. One other thing is maybe we need better solar panels. I think it was solar balanced, though. 600 watts doesn't seem like much. These basically suck. <laughs> um, uh... A pretty big solar panel still only get 600 watts. I guess that's how it is. Again, uh, the problem being that I think the wattage here is sort of like 1950s, 1960s levels. Well, we'll we'll save this. Actually, the pod still costs the most, so it's not that bad a hit to our budget. Okay. So we got the rescue thing, we got that thing, and our Venus probe is on its way. So, let's time warp. Okay, we are approaching the mid-course adjustment point. I'm just going to kill rotation here so that we get sunlight. Taking a look here, apparently our pad at Kuru might be complete in 33 days, which would certainly make rescuing Lobbin a lot easier, and maybe... We could actually do it. Well, we can't do it for Lynx because we can't get through the hatch when the arrow shell is on. But, yep. Yeah. It might make Kerbal rescues a little bit easier in the future. Might, if it all works out. I haven't actually used that function in Kerbal construction time, even when I was playing uh, career mode before. And any science we can do around here? Ah, atmospheric pressure scan. Okay. Want to see when our technology unlocks. Precision, ge precision engineering 239 days. Okay, that's as good as we can do that. And we are getting sunlight like this. Uh, we don't have anything else to do until we get there. Our construction lob bin rescue will be ready just after we reach Venus, so we can just follow this. Even after the initial pad construction is complete, that doesn't guarantee it can launch a heavy mission, right? We might need to upgrade it. Okay, we have entered Venus SOI. I'll keep the Venus window there. Let me add a Mars window just in case. I don't know if we have anything for Mars. We do know that we will have stuff that we can't do at Venus this time around. Okay, calm assessment. We're we're good. Our comms are going off in this direction, which is not going to be blocked by Venus at periapsis. Comms at periapsis, of course, will also be essential for the arrow breaking. Okay, and we have captured. Any signs now? Nope. At apoapsis, I want to sort of tilt a bit. We do not want to boost up. We will want to boost down. Into the atmosphere lightly. It's 145 kilometers. And I'm going to go for 125. And we will see what that does for us. But that's in five days. We can probably, well, Lob and Rescue will be ready in one day. We can probably roll it out and get the rescue done in time. So let's do that. Okay, we are on the pad with the rescue of Lodbin. Lodbin's heap is right there. We're just launching out of uh, Cape Canaveral. For simplicity's sake, I think we would have to upgrade the pad at Kuru anyway for this rocket. 232 tons, as you can see. So, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. All of our engines are good, and launch. So off we go to rescue Lodbin. Once again using the SE 2060 engines. Methane and oxygen. And once again we'll have to make a very, very serious inclination adjustment. And deal with the fact that Lodbin is partly in the atmosphere. <laughs> so. Lots of things to worry about. Okay, booster set. Okay, well, separation and ignition. 
two engine twos. So, as far as our target is concerned, uh, we'll be close to its apoapsis, but not quite when we get to it at the equator. I really hope we can sneak to it efficiently. It's a little bit ahead of us. I want it just a little bit behind us, actually. That's annoying. Might take some time to get to it, but we have to watch out. We have a maneuver to do in a day and ten hours. Okay, and stop. Okay, 156 by 153. Close approach, 779 kilometers. And that's probably with, yeah, that's with the heap ahead of us. That's not what I wanted, but... Alright, well, we're probably gonna have to take a while to do anything with it then. We're gonna have to phase for a while. But we'll just do the inclination bit first. That'll let Lodbin's heap catch up. But maybe this is the wrong place to do that. But building it into the inclination burn is probably helpful. But Lodbin's... Well, Lodbin's periapsis is not too bad. 132. All right. That bit where we are temporarily suborbital, not always helpful. Uh, at least it'll be done quickly, hopefully. Okay, next stage. Oh yeah, we had a rotational problem on here I haven't fixed. Shoot. I wonder what happens... Uh, I mean, we tilted them so that the engines could point through the center mass. I wonder if I shut down an engine. Oh, that's not good. Okay. Forget I asked. This is probably not the time to test things like that. <laughs> We're suborbital still. Looking at our comm situation, I want to make sure we get orbit back first. Okay, I'm gonna shut down. I'm a little bit worried about comms here. That line is stretched a lot. So, then I don't see our next line. So, we're in orbit, and we've got about 8 degrees left to correct. So, yeah, I'll leave it here. Let's continue to set that target. Okay, go. It's a sort of tenuous connection to an island down there. If it's around right now, it should last. Okay, I think that'll just about do the trick. Let's have it stop spinning here. Okay, we'll be entering render range of it right there. We do this correction and we have all the delta V we need. Uh, looks like we're not in a good place for signal though. Yep, Pacific Ocean, the worst. Hmm. Well, we'll wait until we get something. Up oh, there we go. Just in time. Well, almost in time. Oh, ignition failure on one of them and we know that Having only one doesn't work very well. Should be, I think, that Hawaii helps, but we're very close to the surface, so... Well, this isn't looking good. We could try a different opportunity if it needs to happen like that. Well, now we have something, but I, don't, I think we're way too far to do anything about this. Okay, if I'm reading this right, we should... Bring our orbit down here. We have a comm station right there. Actually, we might have been past the time that we should have done this, actually. Uh, that periapsis is worrying. Oh no. I mean, there's the comm situation. That's another problem here. I think we'll pick up at India. Well, we've got that delta actually working for us right now. Okay, we just need to sort of get there quickly. That doesn't seem like it's super calm happy right now, though. Ah, oh, we've lost comms there. Hush darn it. I don't feel like testing whether our Kerbal can actually bridge that gap. Uh, 
come on. Ah, uh, we've entered the atmosphere. I mean, I can use the RCS, and I think this is an emergency situation, darn it. <laughs> I'm just boosting our orbit so that we don't deorbit during this. There seems to be a separation over there that's helped out by this. We'll go with that. Okay, well, we have comms. The question is what we're going to do with it. Now that we've drifted away, but we better do something quickly. I have limited amount of Delta V now. It was looking good before, but you know, things have changed. Okay, well, we have an approach. 12 minutes. Well, where does that put us? I think we'll be in c communication with Kuru right there. So hopefully... Everything is good. At least we're in orbit. Hopefully I haven't taken too long. And the Kerbal hasn't perished or something. Um, Lodbin here. Does have food, water, and oxygen. No electric charge though. Lobbin's a girl. Okay, EVA. It's um, one of these cabins though. Conic cockpit. Okay, well, we better just let go here. Uh, where is the pod? I thought it was earthward. There it is. As long as they can still use their jetpacks without electric charge, it's fine. And board. Okay. That is done. Now we just need to deorbit. Oh well, uh, we are already sort of uh, partly deorbited. Uh, let's get to a full orbit. I want to recover this. Again, it's close to the equator though, so it's not like we're going to recover it close to Cape Canaveral at all. But I guess we'll try our best. So, prograde. Okay, well, we're back in orbit. I don't suppose there's some science here. Probably not. We're over water. We've done the EVAs before, right? <laughs> Double check, EV report, yeah. Okay. Okay, let's deorbit now. Seems like both of these engines have quit on us, or at least they're not showing the fuel anymore. Oh, no, they're, they're still... F I don't know what's going on with them, though. We've got a lot of... Oh, uh, one of them is off. That's what's the problem. Alright, that should be good enough. And everything should be okay here. Right, we'll go normal and dump the service module. Go ahead and arm the parachutes now. Okay, off goes the service module. I think SAS is better. Or not. Nope, it's not. <laughs> I keep trying to use SAS or Smart ASS, but they're not good. So I'll just stick to manually controlling it for now. Okay, I think the atmosphere finally has a grip on us. A reminder that the pod is supposed to have a blade or two, but we reduced that amount. But you can see some of it's been used, so I decided that probably it's not good to have none. Uh, but the heat shield at the bottom has all of its ablator. Oh, maybe we'll be in the, in the Atlantic. Gosh, this thing covers a lot of distance. Yep, mouth of the Amazon, in fact. Okay, we have parachute deployment. Just on one of the islands in the mouth of the Amazon here. Okay, let's recover, and I'll recover to VAB this time instead of do the normal recovery. Okay, we've got Lodbin. We presumably got that contract complete. Well, we've got a lot of other contracts to clear up here. Yes, Rescue Lodbin has been completed. Not very lucrative, but we get an extra Kerbal, and they are expensive. So, let's jump back to the Venus probe, do its maneuver, and see about aerobraking it, which could 
result in the explosions, of course. Okay, we are very high over Venus. And let us do this minor maneuver. I wanted 125 as a reference. Okay, 125 kilometers. Let's see what happens. Does it matter which way we go in? Everything is pretty, you know, sensitive and everything. I think we'll just go in like this. Maximum drag. I don't know. Let's see. Last minute science. No such luck. Just 20 kilometers into the atmosphere. I forget where it started really getting hot in Venus's atmosphere. I don't think it's at 125 kilometers though. Well, our orbital period is going down. So we get some drag here. But I seem to recall it being very sudden, the onset of heat in Venus's atmosphere. Well, we are going back up. All right, so that wasn't good enough. Let's go to 120 kilometers. Okay, 118. This could be bad, but let's go for 118. Okay, here we go again. Once again with the no heat shield arrow breaking in Venus's atmosphere. Let's see what 118 kilometers does for us with this apoapsis. Keeping in mind that we're not going in on a hyperbolic trajectory we have captured. Now there's some aerodynamics going on as far as probe's rotation, but nothing too dramatic here. It is pulling our orbit down, that's good. And we are not blowing up at 118 kilometers. Hasn't slowed us down a whole lot, but it's brought us down a little bit. Okay, well, I'll try a tiny little bit lower. 116, let's go 115. Might regret this, but here we go. We have already slowed down a little bit compared to the previous paths, so maybe that'll help. Okay, in the atmosphere again. It starts to dramatically... Oh, 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 oh no. Uh, oh no, oh no, things are exploding, things are exploding. Oh no, 115 kilometers is not good. Okay. Well, anyway, I had to try. So yeah, big dramatic difference between 118 kilometers and 115 kilometers very clearly. So we have learned this. It was an experiment and we will uh, try and build a better probe next time. Of course, if we want to dip into the atmosphere, maybe we should have a heat shield. <laughs> but anyway, that was uh, we've got another opportunity in a year. Uh, anyway, we rescued a Kerbal and we got a little bit of funding. We are building a mission to send a Kerbal on a flyby of the moon, so that continues construction. And hopefully we will do that. I don't know, it looks like we might have some interplanetary probes first before we do that. Uh, but anyway, those are our plans. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.